Before we get into the opioid drugs, we need to learn the opioid receptors. And we have three of them. Delta, which is used by encephalin. Kappa, which is used by denorphin. And mu, which is used by beta endorphin. The mechanism of action is fairly straightforward. The opioid receptors will be agonized, and this results in a cell hyperpolarization. This leads to the opening of the potassium channels and the closure of the calcium channels, and thus the target cell will be inactivated. And this will decrease the release of the pain substances and the molecules that cause pain. The pain substances that can cause pain are substance P, serotonin, glutamate, acetylcholine, and norepinephrine. The first drug is pentazosine, and this medication works on two receptors. It agonizes the kappa receptor and antagonizes the mu receptors, and it is used for moderate to severe pain. If this medication is used with any opioid antagonists, like naloxone or natrexone, it will cause immediate withdrawal symptoms. And it makes sense because you will have two antagonistic effects, one of pentazosine and the other of the antagonistic medication. Next, we have butorphenol. This medication agonizes both kappa and mu receptors, kappa being fully agonized and mu receptor being partially agonized. And it is one of the hardest medications to antagonize with the antidotes. It is mainly used for severe pain, such as migraine or labor pain. And just like pentazosine, it also causes immediate withdrawal symptoms when used with opioid antagonists. This medication is very famous because it has the least respiratory depression with all the opioid medications. Tramadol is a very weak opioid and is commonly used along with SSRIs. It's mainly used for mild chronic pain as a maintenance therapy. It can also inhibit the reuptake of nephrinoperephrine and serotonin, so it can cause serotonin syndrome and seizures. Both morphine and fentanyl are IV anesthetics, and they can be used as IV anesthesia, and we mainly use them in anesthesia for cases of acute pulmonary edema. Codeine and dextromorphine are both antitussives, so they are anti-cough medications. Both loperamide and diphenoxalate are used as diarrhea treatment because they slow down the gut and they prevent the diarrhea symptoms. And to prevent the addiction and the overtaking of this medication, the same pill is often combined with atropine. So it has a little bit of atropine and the majority of the medication will be the opioid medication. So that if you take the medication in small amounts, you will have the opioid effects of anti-diarrhea. But if you take it in a larger amount, will have the atropine effects which will cause side effects and symptoms. Methadone is used for heroin addiction. And finally, meperidine is the only opioid medication that causes mediriasis. All other opioid medications, of course, cause meiosis. The side effects of opioid medications are all similar, and the severity depends on the potency of the medication. So we have, of course, the most common side effect, which is addiction, and we treat this with naloxone or naltrexone. Tolerance, of course. And tolerance is actually sometimes useful, because if a patient is dependent on opioid medication for a long time, over time they will not have constipation or meiosis, which we see with the long use of opioids. So constipation and meiosis are acute side effects. And of course, respiratory depression and CNS depression.